Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to continue to have a look at the latest on the heat wave that we do have that is gripping the British Isles at the moment. We'll also have a look at the thunderstorms that are going to be coming at the end of this weekend into the start of next week. We've got numerous yellow thunderstorm warnings in force. We're going to touch on those today but we'll put out a detailed video in tomorrow uh, for tomorrow's video uh, where we'll have a look at various models we'll have an in-depth look at those weather warnings as well so do make sure you check that out if you are very if you are interested in those storms coming towards the sunday monday and tuesday so detailed video to do tomorrow looking at all of that but we will touch on it in today's video but we'll first have a look at all those temperatures as well um, as we are likely peaking this heat wave today and tomorrow perhaps in the mid to high 30s we'll also have a look at the mid to longer range as well looking at the gfs gm east and of and the ensembles looking at what we're going to be seeing the second half of august still a mixed bag still does look like there'll be some unsettled weather but also seeing a trend perhaps for some more warmer or hotter weather right at the end of the month so do stay tuned for the second half of the video where we'll have a look at that in detail as well so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the links in the description. So if we do start on the live radar, you can see, once again, very little precipitation. Some across the far, uh, far northwest of Scotland, but elsewhere really nothing at all. And you can see that pretty consistent over the northwest of Europe as well. But over the next few days, this high pressure will be replaced by low pressure. And I'm expecting to see a lot of greens and reds on this chart. Big heavy showers, torrential downpours and thunderstorms as well. But for the time being, it's hot, incredibly hot, uh, with temperatures up into the mid-30s today. Now, I'm recording this around half 11 in the morning, recording a little bit earlier than usual. So we aren't uh, seeing the peak temperatures today. We've still got three or four hours left of heating. So these are the temperatures at 11 a.m. roughly, mid to high 20s. We'll have a look at some of the observations in a minute, and you'll see some areas are already touching on the low 30s. That's why 35 or even 36 degrees is possible today. Oppressively hot out there. And it is widespread water wall sunshine, widespread heat as well. Typical heat wave conditions for the British Isles. Uh, and again, that bullseye area across the West Midlands, western parts of southern England into the southwest as well. You can see those darker colours there. And that's where we're likely to see these pinks that are starting to appear across France. We're expecting those to spread in as well. That is those mid to high 30s. So if we do have a look at net weather, look at the latest observations, you can see as of around 11 a.m., these are the latest observations we got in and widespread 29 plus degrees. These are the top 20 from the net weather stations that uh, the net weather have access to. Of course, there are more stations out there that the Met Office have exclusive access to. And of course, later this afternoon, we'll see them publishing probably hourly updates. Um, so we'll have to wait until probably around 5, 6 p.m. to find out the official highest temperature of the day. But I'm expecting it to be around that 35 degree range, maybe slightly higher. Because you can see already in Shoreham, we're at 30.3 degrees. And quite a few stations here are above 30 Red. And you can see it's ridiculous how some of them along the south coast towards Bournemouth and Southampton. You know, normally we'd expect a bit of a sea breeze cooling these areas down by a degree or two. But that's where we're seeing these bullseye temperatures today. Um, and you'd expect to see some of the London stations coming in here as well. You can already see Heathrow at 11am. So widespread potential across the south and central areas for these mid 30s. And we'll just have to see what happens later this afternoon. Now, if we do have a look at the weather warnings... As I said, we still have the amber extreme heat warning in force all the way to Sunday. And we've covered this extensively over the last few videos. So if you do want to have a look at those at least in more detail, do check out videos for the last few days. But still with this amber extreme heat warning of mid-30s, all the way continuing, continuing all the way to Sunday. But we now have yellow thunderstorm warnings. Now, the last few days, we have looked at that thunderstorm risk starting to come in the five-day time frame. We can see that initially it starts out as a western event um, starting across Northern Ireland, Scotland, and of course, Republic of Ireland would be covered here, but it's not under the Met Office jurisdiction, but I'd expect big thunderstorms there as well. So you can see these yellow thunderstorm warnings here, and into Monday, we see a more widespread warning come in for many parts of the west as well. Surprise, we're not seeing extended further eastwards. We'll have a look at some of the precipitation charts in a minute. And we are seeing some of this further eastwards. So unsure why the warning hasn't been extended there, but perhaps it is down to likelihood, because if we do look at this and look at the uh, further details just at the bottom here, we can see it is high impact, low likelihood, because it is 
still a few days away. Um, but yeah, severe thunderstorms. And again, if you want to have a look at these in detail, you can either go to the Met Office website now, or I will cover it in, in detail in tomorrow's video. But I won't do quite do it now, um, as I do don't, I don't want to make this video too long, as I do want to cover the temperatures and the longer range as well. Tomorrow we will exclusively be looking at the five-day time frame looking at the precipitation and thunderstorm risk at all the cape charts so do check that out if you are very much into these thunderstorms coming on sunday monday and into tuesday as well but yeah yellow warnings in force widespread yellow warning with severe thunderstorms so if we do go to the ukv we will have a look at some precipitation charts today again not nothing too extensively but you can see over the next few days really nothing at all but it's as we head into Early hours of Sunday, that's where we start to see the risk come up. 3am, a few showers starting to pop off, and through Sunday we're starting to see some heavy thunder showers break out, even some into England and Wales as well, but initially it's for the west and the north, across Scotland, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. These areas don't really need the rain, the rain too much, some areas are drier than average, some are slightly wetter than average, but it's nowhere near drought conditions across these western areas. It's further eastwards that we need the precipitation. Some parts of eastern Republic of Ireland do need the precipitation as well, and we will likely see some thunderstorms there. But it is across central, eastern, and southern areas of England uh, and parts of Wales that we need this precipitation. You can see through Sunday, nothing too much at all. But as we head through Monday, showers start to spread eastwards. A few lighter showers there through Monday afternoon, some severe thunderstorms starting to break off widely. And you can see a widespread risk. Through Monday night, we could see a multi celled system where these storms sort of band together into a large area of precipitation, move northwards and into Tuesday. So you can see those th severe thunderstorms breaking out potentially through Monday and into Tuesday as well. It is the five day time frame, so there is some uncertainty with exactly how reliable this is at this stage, but the risk is there and it is something we do need to keep an eye on. Of course, Met Office warnings do not extend to Tuesday yet, probably because there is too much uncertainty. And we'll have to keep an eye on it. We we'll most likely would see a warning put in force to Tuesday at the earliest, maybe tomorrow, but perhaps into Sunday is the, be the most likely situation. Again, if we did see some of these charts verify, we wouldn't even be surprised to see an amber warning for thunderstorms, looking at the severity of some of these showers. So if you have a look at the temperatures, just finish up uh, from the UKV. Have a look at today's temperatures. You can see it is going up towards the mid-30s. Bullseye area, probably 35 degrees, but widely 33 and 34. And we can see that tracking on those net weather observations as well. We're already into the 30s, and by 3 p.m., likely to be into the mid-30s. As you can see, for Saturday afternoon, those temperatures perhaps getting even higher, maybe 34 widely. Again, 35, a little bit more widespread there. You can see it near the Cardiff area. We could even, again, see locally 36. And the Met Office and BBC Weather, people like that, have said the risk of 37 is possible as well, locally. But the widespread temperature, I must say, is probably around that 33, 34 degrees. So I don't think everyone's going to see 37. That most likely will be sort of a bullseye area, perhaps getting the fern effect down in the southwest or something like that could cause 37 degrees and it's likely though luckily by sunday afternoon it will cool down for some still in central and east areas we could still see the mid 30s 33 34 but further north and further westward starting to cool down you can see more oranges mixing in and i expect by monday much cooler down into the mid to high 20s still quite oppressive though still humid and reasonably hot above average temperatures still hitting heat wave thresholds widely but nowhere near as hot um Nowhere near as hot as uh, as we have seen the next few days. And finally into Tuesday, you can see it's much cooler. Still got a very warm air mass in place. So still could get into the mid-20s for some. But when we see those showers and storms break out, it will be in the low 20s. Maybe even the high teens. Now, if you have the UK Met Glo uh, Global run, again, this is for, by the UK Met Office, but it is a slightly lower resolution model. And if we do have a look at the temperatures, uh, well, actually, if we start on the precipitation first, and we'll just run out to Sunday, see what it is showing for the precipitation today. Again, you can see through those heavy showers and thunderstorms in the north and the west through Sunday into Monday, more heavy showers and storms breaking out quite widely before dying out through the evening. Nothing too major in the east, though, a few showers there. But it's as we head into Tuesday, major thunderstorms heading up from the south, giving severe precipitation, a massive area. Again, it is low resolution, so we're not likely to see precipitation in all areas here. But pretty severe system there. And yeah, it could be giving up a few surprises with some heavy precipitation through Tuesday. And beyond that, just continued with low pressure spiralling in before it looks like Wednesday and Thursday could be a little bit drier for those areas. So we could see a couple days there of heavy showers and thunderstorms. 
If we do have the two meter max temperatures from the uh, the from the UK Met Office Global run, if we do run out to today, uh, this afternoon at least, you can see widely into the low 30s. Again, we have seen that this run has been a degree or two below what the other runs are going and the live observations. We can always add a degree or two onto these temperatures for the widespread conditions, but still low to mid 30s. For Saturday, those temperatures could once again peak in the low to mid 30s, maybe 35, 36, or 37 is possible locally. And as we head into Sunday, still widely very hot into the low to mid 30s. So even though thunderstorm risk comes in on Sunday, we do have warnings in force. The areas that avoid the thunderstorms are still going to be incredibly hot. But by Monday, could be much cooler, bound into the mid to high 20s. Still, as I said, feeling a bit oppressive, but for the Far East, could still be into the 30s there. But it should start to cool down, and for all areas on Tuesday, perhaps into the mid to high teens, even low 20s. So much more towards average or below average, primarily because of the precipitation, evaporation, of course, causing cooling, the heavy clouds. I'm going to cool the air down quite significantly and not allow a lot of sun through. So it is going to be a cooler day. It could be quite be quite shockingly cooler by a good 15 degrees than what on Monday was showing or, or Monday or Sunday was showing so yeah it could be a big cool down on Tuesday and that continues into Wednesday where those temperatures are back to around or slightly below average. So if we do have a look at the DWD icon, have a look what that is showing. If we again start on the precipitation, just run through to Sunday. You can see again heavy showers and thunderstorms in the far west. That continues, heavy showers spreading around and continuing to spiral around. Not as much in the far south and the east than we saw on the other runs. But by Wednesday, a big system coming into the south and east there could be giving some heavy precipitation across the south coast into parts of Kent. Again, you can see the three runs all showing slightly different positionings, all showing heavy showers and storms, but the uncertainty is there quite significantly, especially into Monday and Tuesday for these positioning of these showers and storms. Again, they're convective in nature, so they're going to be hard to predict at the best of times. But you can see here they're all showing slightly different positionings, and that is all because the centre of the low is slightly differently positioned, and that's where we're going to see the biggest convection and the most severe showers and storms. Now, if you look at the two meter temperatures from this icon run, you can see this afternoon those temperatures again peaking in the low to mid 30s, nowhere near as hot as the other runs are making out to be. That's uh, oh, well, actually, you see the afternoon. Sorry, I was looking at the 9 p.m. temperatures there. Sorry, into the low to mid 30s, maybe a degree or two lower than the other month runs. Those some of them getting towards 35 degrees, but still widely into the low to mid 30s. Again, it's not going to make too much difference for people feeling out there. 33 or 35 degrees is going to feel oppressively hot, and that continues into Saturday, into the low to mid 30s. Sunday, still very hot for many areas, into the low to mid 30s, and into Monday, turning much cooler, down into the mid to high 20s. Still, as I said, reaching heat wave thresholds for some, but it is a lot cooler, a good five degrees cooler, and that continues into Tuesday, where it could be it could be five degrees cooler than that for some, down into the low 20s, but still showing mid to high 20s for some on Tuesday. Interesting there, probably because the positioning of those heavy showers and storms are not as much in that East Anglia sort of area and into Central and Southeast England, so we're seeing warmer temperatures there, and into Wednesday, it will probably turn a little bit cooler once again. So if we do now have a look at the mid to longer range, have a look at the latest GFS. Now, the six o'clock run hasn't fully come out, we've got out to around day 10, so we can have a look at this in detail. Again, you can look at the high, uh, the high pressures in control at the moment, a bit of an easterly wind, but we see this small low pressure system develop to our south and our west, spiralling in showers in off the continent. Look at the 850 HPA temperatures, and you can see incredibly hot conditions still across the UK, but you see this pocket of cooler air that's under the low pressure, temperature contrast fueling up this low pressure system, increasing that convection, significant uh, convection moving through there, and we're again going to see heavy showers and storms for eventually we probably go into more of a westerly flow, looking not too bad. Some warmer air masses here or there, so we could still see temperatures into the mid to high 20s at times, but generally nothing too persistent at this stage. And a lot of low pressure systems just sitting around. I see there's quite a severe little low there. That could even be a named storm, potentially. Looking at the tightness of those ice bars, could be seeing 50, 60 miles per hour winds there. That's nothing too unusual in the winter autumn or spring but in the middle of summer that sort of wind speeds can bring down quite a few trees because we are still in full leaf so have to keep an eye on that around day 10 uh, and beyond but just shows you the jet stream is centering slightly further southwards bringing us more low pressure and hopefully more precipitation 
If you do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare over the next 10 days. Again, high pressure in control. We do see that high pressure shift out there, the eastwards, low pressure coming in with hot air wrapped around it. And we just generally go into a more of a westerly flow in the longer term with low pressure centered over the top of us, showing quite unsettled, but still equally around average temperatures, maybe warmer than average at, at times, because you can see those low, low pressures dying southwards, bringing up slightly warmer air from the south. You can see that warm air is getting pumped northwards temporarily ahead of the low pressure. So we could see a few days here or there into the mid to high 20s, but still temperatures generally probably around average and not looking too bad, but will be accompanied by precipitation, which I think a lot of people will appreciate. If finally, for the mid to longer range models, have a look at the ECMWF. You can see high pressure in control at the moment, continuing before eventually low pressure replaces its centre to our south, bringing us in cooler air and bringing us heavy thunderstorms as well. Beyond that, so low pressure eventually tries to push southwards, and it does, but still those centre of the lows are further northwards, so it means the south will still be in slightly warmer air masses, could still see mid to high 20s there, and could also be slightly uh, less unsettled, so we're seeing less of that precipitation, which we do want. Yes, thunderstorms are good for precipitation, but they almost give too much rain in a short period of time. We get a lot of runoff, it could cause flooding issues, um, but it doesn't saturate the ground. We need sort of persistent rain events that last six to eight hours of big weather fronts that produce light to moderate rain for a long period of time. That's the sort of precipitation we need to saturate the ground again, to give us, um, to, or to reduce the drought conditions to water plants, grass, things like that. That's the sort of rain we do need, not severe thunderstorms, which does help. It's better than nothing, but it does produce a lot of runoff and the ground doesn't soak too much of it in. So we just have to see exactly what happens with this, but we do ideally need these low pressure systems slightly further southwards, giving us soaking in the south as well. If we do finish by having a look at the ensembles, this is the latest GFS ensemble, you can see above average at the moment, around 15 to 20 degrees at 850 HP and slowly reducing into the start of next week and significant precipitation spikes there. Again, quite a few spikes there, nothing too crazy high, but that is because it's convective in nature, and the ensembles are not always going to pick up on the localised little systems and severe thunderstorms that can be very, very local. Beyond that, we stay quite unsettled, and temperatures are around maybe slightly above average in the longer term, interestingly, and that's why I said there's potential in the longer term for us to go maybe warmer or hotter once again, but no consistent signal at this stage, just generally around average with precipitation but equally there's no massive precipitation consistency there from the ensemble members so still could turn out drier but we'll just have to see really the only assurances we do have is that it's going to turn cooler next week and it's going to be slightly more unsettled with widespread showers and thunderstorms if we finally have a look at the ensembles again you can see around average uh, well, sorry well above average at the moment turning back towards average significant precipitation next week in terms of showers and storms especially further westwards and actually even bigger rise in upper air temperatures towards the last week of August. Still some precipitation around, so still could be low pressure associated with it, but quite a significant rise, good five degrees potentially above average there, with quite a few ensemble members getting towards that 15 degree range, which would give temperatures back into the low 30s. So very interesting seeing that, could see another surge of heat in the last week of August. Again, it is only a few ensemble members, it's just the averages there at the moment are still equally cool ensemble members. I mean, you could wait until runs later this afternoon and into tomorrow and they could completely flip it because it is day 10 to day 14. But it is something we do need to keep an eye on. But anyway, for the time being, make sure you do enjoy the hot weather we have at the moment, but also do stay safe. Do, of course, reduce any fire risks by... Uh, staying safe out there if you are smoking or having barbecues or whatever. Do make sure you look after the vulnerable, uh, keep people hydrated, and of course, stay out of the sun during the peak hours. And of course, if you are out in the sun in the peak hours, put sun cream on. Um, and of course, hopefully we do see those heavy storms uh, and, and showers into Sunday in the west and more widely through Monday and Tuesday, which will cool this, these temperatures down and hopefully give us some rain. As I said, Stay tuned for tomorrow's video where we'll have that a look at that uh, in a lot of detail. Um, so yeah, of course, stay tuned for that. But for the time being, enjoy the warmer weather, the hot weather we do have at the moment. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.